Michio Kaku, that's his name. Michio yeah. Kaku, I have a book by him here. We, we, he thinks we will discover alien life in the next 100 years. Um, but uh, because he's very, very optimistic, he writes books with titles like The Physics of the Impossible. Uh, yeah. but, but he thinks that if we do so, we should probably be quite cautious about. Uh, about it because they might wipe us out. And he gave the example of Cortez and how Cortez was welcomed by the king of the Aztecs. And uh, and then Cortez just displaced the king of the Aztecs and uh, and they all died of disease and whatever and were generally conquered. So the Aztecs right. didn't do very well from coming into contact with a superior civilization and uh, nor, nor might we. Oh, and of course not. No. no. And that's what's, uh, that's what's got us thinking about this, folks. All right, Ed, how are you? Yes, all right. Yes. Did you have a good Easter? Uh, I did. Yes, I went to church. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Episcopalian, as you know. Oh, kind of the ultimate Episcopalian in the sense that we don't actually believe. <laughs> no, the, the, the ultimate Episcopalian simply believes in wasps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he believes in and worships wasps. That's it. Yeah, so, exactly. So, we... Our wasp god. Uh, no, it was very nice and uh, ate way too much candy. I'm, I'm kind of starving myself for the next couple of days because I, I got, I, I ate so much candy that I was like, by 5 p.m., I was like on the verge of total collapse. Right. But my experience of American, <laughs> my experience of American chocolate is that it doesn't have any sugar in it anyway. So I don't suppose that it would have had that much of an effect, would it? Well, we did have Cadbury cream eggs. You would be. Happy. Oh, do they have those in America? And they taste yes, like proper Cadbury cream eggs. Oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. I think so. Uh, I love them. They they're only available around Easter time, but I there I I love those. those are, yes, they are. They are stuff. nice. We, we we used to have a boy when I was uh, on my robe when I was about ten, and uh, we used to call him Cadbury's cream egg because he had brown hair, but he had like a white circle of hair at the top. <laughs> so his, his nickname was Cream Egg. Um, That's nice. Um, poor chap. I so see. have you have you been vaccinated yet? Ed? No. Okay. Have you? I've I've taken my first dose. Yes. Oh no no we we don't we don't have any of this up up our way because we don't have much corona up our way. Oh, so okay. th there's no there's no sort of pressure to get vaccinated. I haven't received anything about this at all. Uh, oh, I don't think okay. interesting. Uh, I I took the first dose. Uh, I think I did the Moderna, so I was a little bit sore for sore on my uh, arm, kind of weirdly. Never mm. been sore from a shot for that long, but I mean, not that it was a, a major thing. But um, yeah, no side effects. Uh, well, except of course that Bill far. Gates now knows everything you think. Well, I mean, if we want to reach stage three civilizations, um, microchips in our heads, controlled by overlords, is step one so, i mean i mean your, your former fellow montana resident mr kaczynski uh-huh would, would, yeah. would, uh, who of course lived outside lincoln montana would um would not be happy about this uh at, at all i mean this is exactly his nightmare coming true and the only mm -hmm. solution would be for him to send parcel bombs to random caretakers um, yeah, absolutely. Well, as you know, um, once you get a vaccination, Windows 95 basically plays in your consciousness. Um, now, now, some people think that's a side effect. I, I think it's a, a feature. It's excellent to wake up in the morning yeah. and you, you wake up and you know it's time. Anyway, should we move away from this nonsense and, um, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, okay. move on? To All right. This, this so I, I, this is going to be a offbeat, off the beaten track uh, discussion, or maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it actually gets to the heart of what we care about. But um, so you sent me an interesting article uh, from the scientist, and he's really a public scientist. He's kind of a Carl Sagan of our day, uh, Michio uh, Kaku, who um, you're holding a book of his. I have actually never read one of his books. I probably should. Um, I've seen a lot of his interviews and videos, and he seems like a you know enlightening and 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 also generally kind of fun guy as well. Um, I do consume a lot of popular science books, but I haven't read one of his. But he basically said, he gave a warning, which is that, well, he, he showed optimism and a warning, which is that we likely will uh, meet intelligent life out there of some kind, but actually we should be careful 
what we wish for. Uh, so you can go on this, and then I have a couple of different things I want to talk about, Fermi's paradox, and then stages of civilization. But why don't you go on this? And well, um, first of all, if the life was, there's no, if he's saying this is going to happen within our lifetimes or whatever, which is what I inferred from, from the article, yeah. then it won't be us that is reaching this. In, I mean, our intelligence is declining right. and we haven't got in, we haven't, we've, we've, we're not seriously sending people into space or we're even contemplating trying to find intelligent life anymore. We've become decadent and focused, therefore, on harm avoidance and on the on equality and things on Earth. So it would have to be, um, for the civilization to find us, they would have to be, um, not only would they have to be much, much more intelligent than us, which is extremely dangerous um, because they might see us as dispensable and not worth bothering about. And that was the, the parallel he gave was when Cortez uh, found the king of the camp, found the Aztecs. And the Aztecs, okay, I mean, they were in the ruins of a more advanced civilization, but they weren't a particularly advanced civilization themselves. And as far as he was concerned, they were just rubbish. And yeah. uh, he had, was perfectly content to just, the king of the Aztecs was quite friendly to him. He simply displaced him, took over, tore down their shrines, spread all kinds of diseases they weren't used to and killed them. So um, it, it didn't go well uh, because th there was a substantial difference in civilization and therefore they looked, they looked down on them. So I would think that that's going to be tenfold more uh, if we're talking about a species that's capable of, uh, of inter-solar uh, system travel. Uh, or, well, or, I mean, but have you considered the fact that we invented feminism and they're going to need that? So we, you know, they, they would come with advanced interstellar technology. They're going to need, like, they will we come with have that. feminism. So he, you're welcome. Right. And, well, that brings me on to my, that brings me on to my second <laughs> I point. They would so, be like, so, so, so they would, right, that, we're ending they, this they, would, they would, they would, so first of all, then it's, it's very likely that, that for them to be able to do this, um, they would have to be far more intelligent than us. They would have to, I mean, maybe they would have an IQ, an average IQ of 120 or 130. Maybe if we had the technology at our disposal that we had in the 60s, now, and yeah. we had the same IQ that we had when we began the Industrial Revolution, then if that happened, then maybe we would be doing things like going to Venus and where you, where you couldn't land on Venus, it's too viscous, but, you know, so just going there. Um, yeah. or, or, or this, but, but, but Mars. We're there, we go, Definitely. Well, whatever. We don't. But we don't. We yeah. don't. We did have that, but we don't. We so we, we we don't have that. So that's how much more intelligent they would be uh, than us, and that is a huge uh, difference. Uh, Thirty IQ points. That's the difference between us and uh, you know primitive tribes in Africa. So yeah. um, that's that's the, that's the first thing. So they would see us. They but that doesn't mean because we don't see them as dispensable, but when we were in our exploration phase. When we were in the phase where we were not decadent, where we were uh, in the autumn of our civilization, where the fruits of the civilization were coming in, then we we were we did not we we did see ourselves as superior. We did see ourselves as better. We did see these other people as dispensable and beneath us. We had our racial theories and stuff like this. We were into eugenics and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so that we we would it, it, what we approached Africa with that in mind. And that being the case, we were happy to exploit them. We were happy to just take over their lands. We were happy to enslave them, although it should be emphasized that they also enslaved each other. But uh, th th there we are. We were, ha we were perfectly happy to do that. We were happy to just treat them as a, as a sort of, a, not a subspecies, but as a sort of sub, as a, as a lesser kind of human. Um, and these were people that were genetically closely related to us, that were genetically similar to us. Um, relatively speaking, as, as part of a, of, a, of, a, of a religion which preached that we, you know, we're all equal in the eyes of God or whatever. I mean, as mm. late as the 1950s, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury in England stated when he came back from Africa that all are equal in the love of God, but not in the eyes of God. Mm. And he said that with reference to these Africans. So that would be, if they were in that phase of civilization, they would be high in group-oriented values, high in ethnocentrism, high in cold, rational logic um, uh, uh, and classification and all this stuff. And so they'd be perfectly happy to enslave us as, or, or at least to exploit us and take us over and take charge of us as we did to people with that kind of IQ difference. But they're a different species. So they, they, they have, they, they, they've no genetic similarity to us at all. 
Right. And one of the things that predicts being nice to people and being kind to people and bonding with people is genetic similarity. So in that sense, it, it, we shouldn't compare our relationship to them with, to, to the Victorian white man's relationship with black people. It's more comparable to our relationship like dolphins or something. I mean, right. they're, they're, or, yeah, I mean, w w when we go to bees, we don't have any trouble basically taking them out of their natural habitat, putting them into giant boxes and then harvesting their honey. No right. one has any moral qualms and for that. I, 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 was just, I, was just, I was just guessing on that IQ difference that would be necessary. I mean, it could, it's probably more. So well, maybe so. It, it might be more and it might just be different. I mean, okay, here are some, because <clears throat> I, I want to add something about the intelligence. Because I, I actually don't, uh, obviously intelligence is a uh, indispensable quality of this, but I don't think it's actually sufficient for this kind of adventure. But um, let me just mention a couple of things. And this is basically Fermi's paradox, which is can be summed up in the line, where are they? So there are 100 billion galaxies that we can, at least estimated, that we can see out there. But we're separated the, from them from through such distances that it into some of them it would actually take millions of years to get there even if we were traveling at close to the speed of light uh so now might there be some other form of travel that we haven't quite grasped you know the a kind of dune like you know folding space or something like that maybe but that that is obviously beyond us uh, but there are, in the Milky Way, there are basically 500 billion stars. So the Milky Way itself, our own galaxy, is huge. Um, and then the estimate from scientists, and so obviously take all of this with a grain of salt, but this kind of gets us you know, in, in the ballpark. The estimate is that there are 100 million planets, uh, excuse me, there, there are 100 million stars that could have planets that could that that are resemble say our solar system that could thus you know have uh, life now if only a tiny percentage of these did actually develop through this miracle this the, the of 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 life generating uh, on a planet, then there should be people out there, and they've had enough time to evolve and to conceivably begin a colonization project. So it does. The Fermi's paradox is a kind of where are they? Well, the are we alone in the universe? Because <laughs> you know, it, yes, it, 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 life for life to development it, develop is already you know the odds are against it. It's already so the, a kind of miracle. The, the there are enough the, chances for it to develop. Go ahead. Right, but the potential so, the potential solution to Fermi's paradox is that um, well, there's two solutions. Uh, uh, one is that these different uh, space going civilizations will never meet because they mm -hmm. they because they will all go through the cycle of civilization. Of, of the rise and fall of civilization, always. Um, even if they get a species that's intelligent enough to have civilization, it won't have civilization for more than fleeting periods of time, followed by long periods of dark age, and then fleet a fleeting period of time where it might be possible to do something like that, um, or even get close to it. Uh, and, and, and so they will therefore... Um, never come into contact because they will just. Ne you'd have to have two for them to come into contact realistically in, in anything other than a destructive way. You'd have to have two civilizations that were in exactly the same uh, sort of place at the same time, and that that's that's very unlikely. Uh, the second mm. solution to Fermi's paradox is simply that we it is impossible to ever uh, the the, the um, evolutionary forces necessary to achieve that kind of high level intelligence. Uh, me, uh, 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 intelligence is never able to go far enough to, to, to engage in that kind of uh, interstellar travel uh, because uh, we all, the civilization just always collapses before we become that intelligent. When, when we're in the phase where we might be intelligent enough to do something like that, 
that we haven't that's when our breakthrough of the industrial revolution takes place and therefore by the time we have the sort of technology that might allow us to do things like that we've become decadent and we've stopped bothering and we start to go we, we, we start to go right. backwards um and then i think the third thing which might be relevant is is simply that the nature of intelligence precludes this ever happening because um, the the level of intelligence that would seemingly be required to do that would be so massive, and it seems that intelligence is um, is is maladaptive when it becomes too high. Because what you mm. you invest, you take away uh, energy from other things, and so people that have super high intelligence. I mean, again, I refer you back to your fellow Montana and. Ted Kojinsky. Uh, this was a person who had an IQ of 170, something like that. Mm -hmm. He was super, super duper intelligent. And look at the result. Um, these these are not the kind of people that, that seem to be consistent with uh, uh, building up civilization. They, they high intelligence is associated with autism. It's associated with mental illness. It's associated with all kinds of things being wrong. So. Right. I don't think so. I don't think we could ever become intelligent enough, or if we could become intelligent enough, we would become intelligent that intelligent in the wake of an appalling ice age. And therefore, we at the end of that appalling ice age, we would be sort of hunter gatherers or farmers or something like that. And it would take us time to, 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 to get to, 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 to get the technology. And by the time we got the technology, our intelligence would be falling. So I think there's a number of reasons why we it's just not it can't happen. Yeah, well, there there does seem to be these recurring tendencies, and we we can talk about spiteful mutants and and so on. But if if you look back at world history, it's something like the Bronze Age collapse. Um, remember, we shouldn't underestimate the intelligence and engineering um, genius of the distant ancient world. Uh, in the sense of these Bronze Age civilizations, um, uh, Egypt being uh, one of the most magnificent. I mean, the ability to uh, cre generate, create the pyramids. Oh, well, wait, uh, wait, wait, in wait, wait. But, 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 but that's not Bronze Age, though, is it? That's Stone Age. Um, well, I'm talking about the Bronze I, I Okay. No, Pyramids is not Bronze Age. Pyramids is earlier. Okay, well, and, and that's why, and that's why, and that's why. So. No, it's important because that's why there okay. is this, there is this, there is this belief among certain what's called conspirators. There's a guy called Hancock, his name is, uh -huh. and uh, and he's done a series of books in which he argues that there was a, a technological civilization uh, that was that existed um, in the Stone Age, uh, and that actually it wasn't a Stone Age at all, and that they had like lasers. And that they were a high technology civilization, and some people have gone on from this to argue that they were actually aliens, and so aliens have yes. come here, and aliens built the pyramids. Okay, so well, okay. Uh, um, all right, I'll leave that there. I, I that's not even opposed to what I was trying to say, but <laughs> what I was saying is you the the Bronze Age collapse is one of the most uh, mysterious events. And it does seem to lead to a kind of co collapse of complex societies thesis in which societies get to a point where the intelligence is not high enough to maintain them. That in some ways, the, the, the technology that they're developing is leading them into a certain, is leading to certain demands that the people aren't successful enough to accomplish. So with the Bronze Age collapse, you had the collapse of all of these magnificent empires you had the rapid decline in liter literacy rapid decline of of history writing so that we can actually know what is happening and all of this happened over the course of about a generation i mean it's a remarkable thing um then we of course had the the ancients as as we generally think of them in the sense of the development of of greece and rome but we had similar collapses of these amazing you know imperial well, structures I, I think a, i think a reasonable hypothesis for it is is climate change so you had a situation where it had been extremely cold uh, mm -hmm. that creates intelligent people those intelligence those intelligent people create the bronze age um th then it starts to get warm uh, that means the intelligence starts to go down but the population can grow and can grow hugely um and then it starts to get cold again and when it starts to get cold again you get an absolutely catastrophic collapse it, it right. seems that there's some evidence it got cold because of a volcanic eruption 
So there's a nuclear winter. And this this set off all kinds of things, this movement of peoples known as the Sea Peoples and mm -hmm. uh, all, all of this sort of stuff. Um, we don't know who they are. The sea no, this, well, we don't know. No, 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 amazing. No. Yeah. There's speculation who they are, but, but yeah. we don't know exactly who they were. Pirate, and 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 so you end up with these harried inability to get the 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 whole system, which was based around bronze, starts to be replaced with iron, uh, and so pe and so people, the whole system falls apart very very quickly, um, and lots loads and loads of people die, huge collapse in population. Once that mm -hmm. happens, then all these people whose jobs are based around the city don't have jobs, so they flee the cities. The cities, uh, all these people die. They go back to a simpler way of life 800 year dark age and then yeah. uh, towards the end of that dark age people have no idea how they built these tall buildings and they believe that giants built them right and you get that again and again throughout history this belief that oh, giants built this belief in giants because the, the, the people become so stupid that they don't comprehend how these things are built until later when they rediscover their history and they they work out what went on right um, uh, so and uh, we're worshiping a god that emerged during that period i'll just Mentioned yeah, that. I think I, I you know, it isn't I think, that kind of problematic. So I, I, I think I think that yeah, that's that's the period in which this this religion emerged that the the, yeah. the, the Bronze Age collapse. Yeah, uh, and uh, presumably the, the the previous collapse, whatever it was, Egypt four thousand BC, whatever. Mm -hmm. Every thousand years or so, you seem to get some kind of collapse. Yeah. Um, would would, uh, would 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 be similar, and you you get these giants again and again, even in the Bible. And there, there seems to be a ref that was written towards the end of the Dark Age, and you mm -hmm. seem to, uh, of the sort of the Bronze Age, sorry, during around that time of that collapse, and you yeah. seem to get this reference, this like mythology, whereby when humans were put on Earth after the fall, there were these people there called the Watchers, the Nephilim, and they mm -hmm. were giants, and they mm -hmm. were gods, and they had sex with men. Mm -hmm. men with, with women and 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 all, all this so you've got this idea of these this older civilization which is believed to be giants i wonder if that's a reference to the pyramids and then not understanding how they got about but but it yeah. it's it's fascinating but i as i say i i think that it's um it, it, the Fermi's paradox can be solved by the rise and fall of civilizations we have this belief it, it, scientists have this belief that we can just progress forever because they don't understand how uh, um, necessarily, how these civilizations but isn't what's rise. holding us back? Because I mean, so there's there's the there's Fermi's paradox, which is about them, which is why aren't there other species of some kind? I mean, maybe even non carbon based life forms in in the sense that we can't fully understand who they are. There's also another solution to Fermi's paradox is is that they're already here. And we don't know about it, or they they visit us in previous times, et cetera. Uh, but then there's also the question about us. And um, I I think you know intelligence is obviously an essential component of rising to a stage where you're not just controlling energy on this planet, but you're actually harnessing the energy of your our star, that is the sun. And this is the um, uh, Kardashev stages. Uh, which I, I was just reading about. He was actually a Soviet scientist who was exploring this. Uh, but the, the, there is this question about us and why can't we do it? I think there are some kind of built-in natural aspects that will create cycles. Um, you can think about what, you know, climate change, um, a complex society being uh, impossible to maintain at some point because intelligence doesn't catch up a general intel the general population general population intelligence doesn't catch up to the the kind of IQ that is needed to maintain a civilization um uh but there might be other factors just in the sense of political factors and moral factors um the united states did have a kind of autumn period which is a good way of putting it where we were harvesting all of these things and there were politicians like JFK talking about a new frontier, the space program. Um, even if you want to view this as as kind of you know competition with the Soviets or vainglory or whatever, it, it it at least was political leaders were pushing us in those directions. Uh, it seems to be now that I mean, there's first off a push towards private um, enterprise in space. I think. Bezos is involved in this. Uh, uh, Elon Musk is more famously involved in this. Uh, but there just there seems to be these political and moral dimensions which 
hold us back from you know completing a stage one civilization um that is harnessing all of the power of the earth and that would include nuclear because power we, because we, we, yeah i think i think that what did it was that we became too individualist Mm -hmm. And I think there were two. There were so you think, got to think about. But people don't think about the history of the space race. All the men that were killed, all the men that were killed in an attempt to get to the, in accidents and 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 things like this, um, and the risk that it would go wrong and people would die, and we're just averse to that now. We're yeah. too individualistic now. Why has that happened? Well, one reason, as you say, spiteful mutants or mutation in general, which is a mutation away from from uh, being highly group oriented, which means that we're more individualist at a genetic level. Um, and the second uh, is that is the because of the better conditions, collapse in religiousness because of low stress. Religiousness promotes group orientation. Um, and um, a third is that these individualist genetic people spread their maladaptive ideas throughout society, whatever the reasons, eventually you get to a tipping point. Of, and I think that happened in about 1963, mm. um, where, where, where you you tip over into being a highly individualistic society. It's not the first time this has happened. I mean, you had something like this perhaps around about the time of, of the fall of Rome, um, in which indeed Gnosticism was very similar to modern day multiculturalism in a lot of ways. And mm. so then there's this focus on individualism, or individualizing against the good of the group, and that's what it seems to be inevitable that that happens. Whereas that that hadn't happened yet, in um, or it was just it was happening, but it, it hadn't fully happened yet by the time we managed to get into space, which was what was that? That was the fifties in the Soviet mm -hmm. Union, um, and um, and then get to the moon in '69, and then go to the moon again a few times in the early '70s. And then it just it's all stopped. it's all petered out. Yeah, I mean, and there's this um, this man. Um, his last name's Zubrin. He's actually a uh, Jewish immigrant who makes very compelling arguments for the conquest of Mars. He makes compelling arguments um, for harnessing other uh, power sources beyond fossil fuels uh, and so on that that have geopolitical implications. Obviously, nuclear power is sitting out there as something that people are irrationally afraid of um and it, which also that irrational fear leads to this dependence upon the middle east and and well i mean again america produces a lot of fossil fuel but but still a a focus on the middle east as as this place that we need to care about a place of you know huge wealth as well um and there just doesn't seem to be any political will and i know this is a small thing but there was a a tweet uh not too long ago from bernie sanders and i have some sympathy towards bernie sanders i i think a lot of what he says is is, is very decent um uh, but it was this tweet uh, against elon musk of basically well you know space travel is all fine and good but we've got to take care of these problems down down here on earth there's a uh, a famous um song during the space age of you know whitey on the moon which is like you know we're, we're down here being oppressed and all you bastards are flying into outer space there just seems to be this resentment that and again i well, understand exactly. the resentment on some level but this resentment which will endlessly hold us back so yes, it's not well, just a matter of, of intelligence it's a matter of psychology yeah yeah precisely but the, but that but that but that psychology is um well it's partly a matter of intelligence in the sense that as in, as intelligence goes down you trust people less and if you and you become more resentful and nasty and selfish so it could partly yeah. be a matter of declining intelligence um but secondly yes it's not just intelligence it's 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 the crumbling genome which means greater individualism which means less trust which means less cooperation which means more of these focusing on these individualizing values of equality runaway individualism and general madness and there's another factor which we shouldn't we should forget as well which is what we had with the space race was the most intelligent intelligent minds of the time getting together um, uh, in a meritocracy, basically, um, and, and coming up with these brilliant ideas and putting them into action and doing them. Whereas mm -hmm. what you get, one, and that was in a period where we had it under our highly group-oriented system that you had that held sway until, I don't know, 1850 or something, you didn't promote the best under that system. 
you promote the, you had the religion and you promoted the people on a, almost a religious basis so the aristocracy was upheld by the religiosity and people would get positions in society not because they were the best but because they were nobles or something like that and that there was a now then this system collapses you have a period of meritocracy where you where you believe in truth and you promote people because they're the best and now we have a new religion individualism and so even if we were intelligent enough to be able to come up with these things, which I doubt. We no longer encourage genius. We suppress it because right. of individualism trumping it. And we don't promote the best anymore. We've gone back to a system of promoting the aristocracy. But it's the new inverted aristocracy of women and black people and homosexuals. Right. Um, and so and so, even if we were intelligent enough, which we're probably not, we've still we've got that problem as well, which is that we're not even trying um, to be the best anymore. I mean, you see it even in uh, in all areas of life, even in commercials on TV. They've stopped trying to persuade people to buy things. I mean, how are you persuading people because they want because they want to score woke brownie points? How are right. you persuading women to buy a product if you're getting a lot of fat, ugly women in, in their pants and saying, "Oh, they 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 use this soap, so should you." Well, they're going to think, oh, "I'm not a fat, ugly woman. I want you, people people want to be associated with success and beauty." Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's it's all of these things come together, and um, and as the, the period in which you might have a combination of the necessary intelligence and the necessary group orientation and the necessary martial values to do things like this and possibly reach another civilization is is such a narrow window that in the expanse of space, the possibility that you're going to get far enough to meet another another um, remotely uh, advanced species, you know, I mean, okay, maybe animals or something, but a, a similarly advanced species mm -hmm. is just vanishing. So, right. um, I, I suspect Un unless, I mean, again, the, there are answers to it, but these answers are, they make too much sense in a way they're, they're, they're obvious, but they're, they're also seemingly impossible. I mean, one of the answers is eugenics in the sense that we have passed through a singularity in the sense of just natural selection of the environment holding sway. And things that used to hold in natural selection have actually been reversed. Um, up until the Industrial Revolution, the most intelligent, the most successful were outbreeding the least successful. And the, the aristocrats were outbreeding the peasants, and they were doing it by a lot. Um, I think this is my little pet theory that this was the origin of the prima nocta myth in the sense that the aristocrat was always, uh, uh, he's breeding even with your own wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, prima nocta. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, with, prima nocta never actually occurred throughout history, but it, it was that myth was always there. It gave us operas like the marriage of Figaro. So it was worth something. Uh, but we've, we've gotten, we've gotten to a point where really the reverse is the case. The most intelligent are not breeding successfully. The least intelligent, the more likely to be on welfare, the more likely to not be self-sufficient or productive are outbreeding the, the productive it is horrifying but that's not uh, but we are conscious new. of it and yeah but they were, so we, 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 were, we, we were we were conscious of it in rome and we were conscious of it in greece i mean they write about well, it at the time i i i i know but still like it can't it be different this time i mean it, it, it when you're conscious of something that is how you solve that problem uh but a, the eugenics program is absolutely necessary, uh, but B, we might need to have a new type of religious paradigm that doesn't emerge from a you know scattered wandering people after the Bronze Age collapse. Well, that cool. and, and that might need to focus on the sun in the sense that to get to a second stage of civilization, it will be in some ways harnessing the power of the sun without destroying it and th there thus a, a new kind of solar religion would be the one that would help us get there because i i think that it, unless we are reaching stage two or stay or, or you know a galactic civilization unless we are the them in the sense that we are the ones traveling beyond our sphere then what are we even doing down here you know 
you know, we're, we're, we're literally down here to help people avoid harm or just live their content yet ultimately meaningless lives just rumbling around in the mud. I mean, well, that, that's, we, it. that's unless why they we're do. advancing, then what are we doing? That's exactly right. But that's that's why that's why they so many people are, uh, have this melee of, of late civilization because they've just yeah. given up and there's no point. And that's how a lot of people, the aristocracy anyway, in, in late Rome would have felt. And so they would they would in, in engage themselves with these silly mystery cults and things like this, uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a sort of surrogate activities. But uh, ultimately, there was there was no point. Um, and we, we create this evolutionary mismatch, and then we well, it's actually Ted Kaczynski. I mean, mad and v vicious as he was, he did make a number of. <laughs> I hate to say it, but he did make a number of good points, which yeah. is that you create you create an evolutionary mismatch, and you give people antidepressants to solve the evolutionary mismatch which you've created, right? Uh, or, or which the system the, the system has created. And um, I'm I'm interested in I'm you know I'm researching the, the, this uh, for this book we're doing on zombies and the 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 the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the fu zombie apocalypse the, fu the future the future uh, of this and what I see is that the more in, the more intelligent and the more um, right wing uh, will come apart uh, and and they and they will be group selected and so whether they from their retreat of civilization into smaller areas will uh, will learn. Uh, um, it, it's 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 possible, I suppose. Well, we need to, and we have to. We're conscious of it, therefore we need to do it. And I think maybe what we need to do is conquer this planet so that we, you know, in the sense that we've allowed this planet not to be on in under our control for too long, and we've created this unhappiness and this kind of, you know, medicine that cures the poison in the sense of, you know, here, let me give you antidepressants for the problem that I've just solved. I mean, this is the, the Caduceus in a nutshell. Um, we haven't been con in control uh, for a long time, actually, of our own planet. And, you know, maybe we do need to kind of get away and go to a redoubt and reform. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to force all of these people to our will in order to advance our mission on this planet, um, which is interstellar travel. Sorry, as usual, I'm being bombastic, but I usually get there around the 30 minute mark. Well, you've taken four minutes, but it's all right. Um, it, it, it's the, all that chocolate. Slow down your metabolism. Um, but 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 um, yes, I, I think that is. Uh, you you need to have a mission, and uh, I've, I've, I'm, normally that mission is to just get enough food. And once right. you've got, once you've got what well, that's the most, I'd get sex, and those are the most basic missions. And if you don't, if you if as long as you've got those, then you can see how melee hits in. And yeah. it doesn't hit in if you feel that you're on the up. And that's what we felt for a very long time, that we're on the up. It's getting better. It's getting better. We've got into space now. We've got to the moon now. And then it, there's this change. Uh, um, and even when we were going into space, you have people campaigning, moaning about, oh, uh, well, we should concentrate on black people's rights. <laughs> Why um, on the moon? Um, no, um, why are they on the moon? Um, and and uh, no, it, the, the, the next step just needs you to keep going. And I just think that it's um, impossible unless all of this current woke stuff is reversed. It will reverse itself in that those people, those individualists, whatever, they don't breed. But the problem is that clever people also don't breed. And so, and they're more likely to be sucked in by whatever the dominant ideology is. And so I think I can only offer a sort of gray pill. There's not the white pill. There's going to be a collapse in intelligence. There's going to be a movement backwards, but it, won't, it might not be as bad a collapse as before. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as more intelligent people move out to places like uh, uh, certain ref refuges uh, in parts of America and whatever. I mean, the next stage, I'm thinking as well, that's another thing. As the everything becomes more wokeified, I mean, you're going to get a situation where doctors now in America are going to be taught to be woke, but not actual useful medical knowledge. Yeah. Right, so the result of that is going to be people fleeing to places that do have proper doctors. And the police are taught to be woke. So the result of that is going to be the rise of militias. It's, it's going to be the rise of sort of retinues where you pay protection. Hmm. I mean that's and, and once you once you get that kind of thing, then you get effectively separate states. Hmm. And I think we're moving towards that. Hmm. And so it would only be it would intelligent people separating themselves off from the stupid people would would be a start.
Do you think that China, because it is a nation run by engineers as opposed to a nation run by lawyers and academics in a way that the United States is, um, that they there in China there's at least a potential for the the type of technological advancements that are necessary. Possibly, um, but they, they've been faster implementing a lot of things all, because they don't give a damn yeah. they just kind of do it <laughs> they have but they only have a short window as well because we have data on that we know their indigenic fertility intelligence is negative mm. associated breeding in china mm. um so we 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 know that's happening so they're in their autumn basically they've got to get on with it they need us i think they, they don't they can't think originally and creatively they that, that's not what they're good at so yeah. we, we would be kind of like greeks to their romans and they would they would have to uh, bring us in to to do things, and that, that then if that were to happen, then yes, that 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 perhaps would, and they would promote the best as well. And that's nothing. Yeah. That, there's a problem there, or well. they are corrupt. So do they promote the best? Uh, not always, but 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 um, then they they are they are further behind in the decadence. But the decadence is definitely coming. So if, if they're yeah. going to do something, they have to strike out quickly, um, or they won't be able to do it because it's coming. Well, we'll put a bookmark it in on mm. that.